hello. I'm in the garden this week. Beautiful weather here. My name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with my husband Pete and my four chickens who can hear me talking and who want to be let out but at the moment they can't because Defra says they have to be kept in. But they're all right. So lovely to have you along. I've got so many new subscribers and just to give you a little rundown, we have a fascinating fact. We often have a bit of cooking nowadays. Didn't start out like any of this, but it's grown. And what else? Oh, I'll show you a few bits from the past and from the present. And I do a little bit of counseling, t transactional analysis, because I was, after all, a counselor for 20 odd years. And I'm teaching TA, Transactional Analysis, which is something there that you can learn. I started in episode 12 and it does build if you wanted to catch up, if it's for you. And then at the end, there's a little film. This week, it's about the birds in the garden. I just took a little film. One morning, I looked out of the window, took the film of what was there, and you'll see that. We got our... Lovely robins all singing at the minute. It's beautiful. And the woodpecker has been banging away all morning. He's stopped now, but I'll put a little bit up here just to let you hear him. Bang, 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 bang. And uh, yeah, it's lovely, lovely to know he's there. We often get photos of him through the year. He comes in the garden regularly. Well, the green and the uh, spotted. So, welcome. You're more than welcome. Please pull up a chair and spend the next 40 odd minutes with me. So where shall I start? Well, I want to start with this. A couple of weeks ago, I showed you the wall, Irish artisan wall from Yarn Works. It's cashmere and silk. So it's the most div divine yarn that you can, you can work with. Um, I don't know if you can see it out here. It's, it's blues and purples. It's just so comfortable. I'll take it off and show you. It's, it's so light and so warm. So I knitted it, 377 stitches you land up with, although you start just there and increase and every single row, knit row, you increase to that end and you increase to that end. But at the same time, you do what we call these short rows. And so you can see they land up short and so you get that lovely design. It's got a little pico edge and so this is winging its way to you now and, and I hope you enjoy it and love it as much as I love wearing my one. So. What else did I want to show you? Well, my friend who writes the poems, if you've followed me, you'll have heard the carpet shop and chinwag. Oh, she wrote me a lovely poem about chinwag. All sorts of different poems I've had. She said to me, I hope you're going to get something out of your hamper. <laughs> so before I get something out of my hamper, I wanted to show you this because her husband has just started whittling and he gets these little bits of wood and just sits there with the tray on his lap and whittles and that's what he's whittled me. It's absolutely gorgeous and maybe that's how the girls are really feeling because they're not out. So I treasure that. He's done all manner of things, little donkeys and but that's he came to visit they came to visit a few weeks ago and that's what he sat and did for me whilst he was here. So I put my hand in the hamper and what did I come up with? We went to see Oliver. And it became very staple part of our family. 
I mean, everybody sang Oliver for years. This is February 1978. And Dulcie Gray is Miss Marple at the Vaudeville Theatre. And A Murder is Announced is on. But we saw the old oh, Agatha Christie's Mouth Trap was in its 26th year. I did get to see that. And who did we see in Oliver? But we saw uh, somebody very famous, actually, Roy Hard. And he was absolutely brilliant. He was brilliant. And I mean, it's just a little black and white. program it's not quite so grand as the other one i showed you but we thought i think we must have seen this more than once absolutely terrific robert bridges he says he was a 12 pound baby and has never looked back although he now weighs in at a mere 18 and a half stone compared to his top whack of 28 stone so he's actually lost more weight than most people. And he played Mr. Bumble. <laughs> what a way for a write-up. Oh dear. Things that aren't politically, politically so correct now was absolutely fine. And Bruce, uh, Bruce Forsyth, not Bruce Forsyth, Frank Forsyth was in it as well. He was in uh, the Forsyth saga, which was another one that everybody watched. So there's our little program, very precious it is, because the family always sang at get-togethers whenever. Oliver. Oh, Oliver, my dad absolutely loved it. And so did the girls when they were little, 1978. The other thing I pulled out was this book that I made. I made it at school, stuck all sellotape on it so it would become durable. And what you had to do was write up it's not it's not a workbook it's when you learn something you write it in the book so it's like a textbook i didn't understand anything that i wrote in it find the volume of a packet of cornflakes 11 inches by seven and a half inches by two and three quarter inches Somehow I put 15 over 2, 11 over 4, 11 over 1, and that comes to 1,815 over 8, and that equals then 226 and 7 8 inches. And so the answer is 227 cubic something, so I don't know. Here's another one. A dormitory is 12 foot high, 22 inches long and 35 inches wide. If 308 cubic feet of air is to be allowed per boy, how many boys can sleep in the dormitory? Well, you see, the problem was, I just didn't care how many boys slept in a dormitory. Sorry. Mary bought 500 grams of chocolate home from Switzerland. Bully for her. What is the equivalent weight in pounds and ounces? To, near, to the nearest tenth of an ounce. I've got another one. Mr. Carraway is three times as old as his son is now. Mrs. Carraway is four years younger than her husband. The family's combined ages are 80. How old is each? Mr. Yarrow sells tickets for a concert at three shillings and two shillings. He sells five more two shilling tickets than three shilling tickets and takes three pounds altogether. How many three shilling tickets did he sell? Let X be the number of three shilling tickets sold. I think we better stop there. You can see why I never grasped maths. Thank goodness we've got those little calculators now. <laughs> So that's delving down the hamper and giving you a couple of things from the present. So now I'm going to introduce the fascinating fact and it's about the cuttlefish. So I'll let, uh, I'll let that speak for itself and see you afterwards. 
Cuttlefish can change their colour and camouflage themselves, becoming almost invisible to the human eye. How do they do it? They change colour by using the chromatophore, a special kind of cell found under its skin. These cells contain sacs that are full of coloured pigment surrounded by tiny muscles. When the cuttlefish needs to camouflage itself, its brain sends a signal to contract the muscles around the sacs. Then the sacs and pigment within them expand and the cuttlefish quickly changes its colour and pattern. It may use this skill not only for camouflage, but also to impress potential mates and perhaps communicate. Engineers at the University of Bristol, England, sandwich discs of black rubber between small devices that function like cuttlefish muscles. When they applied electricity, the devices flattened and expanded the black discs, darkening and changing the colour of the artificial skin. Research on cuttlefish muscles, the soft structures that nature is so good at making, according to engineer Jonathan Rossiter, could lead to clothing that changes colour in a fraction of a second. Rossiter says that people might wear cuttlefish-inspired clothes for camouflage or simply for fashion. Well, there you are. I've got a few more notes on the cuttlefish because often when we walk along, we have a little bone. And I always knew that, oh, that's a bone of a cuttlefish. Well, I, I never, I always thought it was the backbone. But apparently this little bone that we find when we walk along the seashore is inside their body. Because this bone, this little bone is very, very strong and it's full of holes. And they, the, the cuttlefish, fill the holes with a mixture of gas and liquid. And the more gas there is, the more they rise and the more liquid, the more they sink. So it's their way of going up and down. So all these little bones, well, I suppose that's the demise of a cuttlefish. But as a child and, and now, they're just so common. But I never quite realised where they came from, inside the cuttlefish itself. So there we are. So now I'm going to uh, do a little bit of cooking with you and I make some pikelets. Yeah, it's uh, a Paul Hollywood recipe and jolly successful it was too. And um, we made, I think we made 15, but as I finished making them and trying them, uh, Lois turned up with baby and I had baby for the day, which was absolutely lovely. So you'll see a little movie of, uh, of baby and Lois eating the pikelets and my daughter had quite a few too. In fact we just saved one for the next day because we wanted to try them in the toaster and see what they were like. Delicious! So I can really recommend them. So I'll see you after the cooking and the baby bit. My baby's Tommy, he's my great grandson and he was born on Boxing Day in December. I'll see you after that. So in the bowl I've got 175 grams of strong white flour, 175 grams of plain flour, 14 grams of instant yeast and a teaspoon of sugar. I'm going to mix those together. Pete doesn't know it yet, but he's making pikelets, pikelets this morning. We're just having our early morning cup of tea. I think that's all mixed together now. Then I've got 350 ml of warm milk. It's lukewarm. I just put it in the microwave for 45 seconds and now it's lukewarm. So I'm going to pour that in. And Paul Hollywood says mix it with a spoon until it forms a dough. Mm. 
You can see that thick batter there now. Making sure I've got all the flour. Now I'm going to cover that and prove it for an hour. So I'll see you in an hour. Hopefully Pete and I will be dressed. We'll have had our breakfast and we'll see what happens then. So here I am dressed after breakfast and I've got this proving behind me. Now, our aim is to get this, let me get my wooden spoon. My, my aim is to get this thicker than a pancake mixture. Oh, you want to have Pete's pancakes. They're wafer thin and beautiful, wafer thin. Anyway, he'll do that another day. We've never made these pikelets before. I said to him, he's busy out there at the minute. I said, just uh, in 20 minutes, could you be ready? He said, why, what am I doing? I said, you're going to make some pikelets. Oh, what are they? So we'll see. It's just something we're doing together. So I've got this now, you can see, it's come up. And what I'm going to do is do that, knock that back with the spoon. I will have to get my hands in there, I think. But I might not. I'll see how it goes. Right, that's gone down now. Yeah. To a sticky mess. I could do it in the mixer, couldn't I? Oh, I might. We'll see how it goes. Now I'm putting in. That's just gone a bit cold, so I'm going to just top that up. That's tepid water. Now he says 150 to 200 ml. So I'm going to put 150. I'm going to leave some in there because I don't want to put it all in. I can add more. So I'm going to leave that amount in the bottom. And then I've got to put half a... I won't be licking my fingers with this one, will I? And I can never open the top of these things, can you? Oh. Hang on a minute, I'll go and, hang on. Do you find tops awkward? I mean, that is so tight. Anyway, don't let's moan. Half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. I'm sprinkling that in. That's going to make that bubble, isn't it? That is going to make that bubble. So I'm going to mix that now. I could do it in my mixer, couldn't I? But anyway, I'll sit and chat with you. So, oh, I bet children would love to do this. It's really squidgy. Not making glue. Now it's coming together, it's not that difficult. I haven't got much power. Here we go. Well, that was easy. We haven't got there yet. What we have to do is get that smooth. Oh. He says it takes he says it takes about 10 minutes to get that smooth. It's, it's almost there for me. But I can't do 10 minutes of that, so I'm going to pop it in the, in the mixer and I'll come back in five minutes in the mixer, I think. Paul, you know, he can do all that. 
I'll be back in a tick. Well, honestly, that took three minutes in the mixer. And if you had a hand mixer, it wouldn't be hard at all because it's quite liquidy. I'll show you. There's no lumps in that now. I haven't touched it with my hands. You don't need to. And you can see that's a lovely mixture with no lumps, but thicker than a pancake mixture. That took five minutes. Not even that. Not even that. A few, couple of minutes. So do you remember mixing that together while we were having our tea? It took me three minutes. I popped it over there for an hour. Come back, that's taken me five minutes. So they don't take any time at all, just to prove. Now, what I've got to do is put this back on and I've got to leave that for 20 minutes. I'm going to ask Pete if he's ready. He's in his old clothes and this and that, but it doesn't matter, does it? Because I'm just going to show you him in sunflower oil, frying them off. I've just got to say that, you know, when you make bread and it all gets stuck in your fingernails and, uh, and washing the stuff up, oh, it's horrible, isn't it? But this just washes off like milk, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't stick at all. So washing up isn't a problem. So pretty plain sailing so far. I just want to show you the batter, how it's all come up, all bubbly. You can see the bubbles appearing while we watch. It makes a <coughs> goodly amount. So now we're going to pop that in the frying pan. Just a little bit of sunflower oil in there, just wiped round. It's our first time of doing it, so we're going to see what happens. This is the moment of truth. You try that one, Pete. Oh, I think you'll need a plate because it looks like the butter will drip through. I'll get you one. There we are. Thank you. Let's see. Now, what's the middle like? It's, the, it's not as thick as a crumpet, but it's very like a crumpet. Mm. Oh, I like it. Oh, I think. Mm -hmm. You know how I think I like this? Pretty sure. Popped in the toaster in the morning. I'm going to make a pile of those. I'll tell you how many it makes. And then in the morning, pop it in the toaster. That'd be gorgeous then, wouldn't it? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I like them. These are mine. And another three in this pan. And of course, it looks like you've got a lot of mixture, but it's because it's all bubbly, isn't it? So we'll see how many they make. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we made 15 and they're just 
Moorish, aren't they? You like them, Pete, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah and you're going to have some with cheese, you said. So I lovely for lunch. You just did. <laughs> lovely for lunch, lovely for breakfast, and lovely for supper. So we can say a good winner. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and do give the pikelets a go if you fancy just something any time scrumptious and very very easy very easy so now it's time for transactional analysis yes so we're doing the okay corral do you remember we've done the get away from and we've done the get on with and now we're going to go into the third part which is I'm okay you're not okay get rid of you can imagine that can't you if i'm okay and you're not okay well i want to get rid of you now i can choose to get rid of you in a scripty way which means i bring the past back into the present and i've already decided the way i get rid of people in my childhood or i can do it in the grown-up way which is far better it frees me from being in script and it allows me to be in the here and now and truly myself. So we're staying with myself. I've been given this work to do. Um, we had, who did we have? Was his name Bill? I think he's, um, oh, Jim. We had Jim coming and nattering last week, didn't we? And we just had to get away from him because that would have slowed us down. But now I want to get rid of this guy that comes into my office. Because 10 minutes later, I'm back in my office with a cup of coffee. Well into the report. I'm doing well. And the door opens. This time, it's my assistant. And he's looking downcast. I've got some bad news, he says. Oh? You know that printing job you asked me to do? I got busy and I forgot about it. And we've missed the printer's deadline. What do I do? Well, I've got a job to do. Don't forget that. I'm doing my own work. This is his problem. Now, I might go into script. I may respond from a position of, I'm okay, you're not okay. I go red in the face. In fact, I'm very annoyed because he's missed the deadline and I've got this flipping report to do. I snarl at him. What do you do? You sort it out right away. Get a move on. Get out of here. I don't want to hear a word from you until you've got it done. My heart rate's soaring. I literally go hot under the collar. When he's disappeared, I say to myself, I can't trust anybody. I just can't trust anybody to do a job nowadays. I've got to do it myself. I've got rid of him. But I've created this justification for believing that I'm okay while others aren't. Now what I want to do is stay in, I'm okay, you're okay. It's far better. 
So how can I do that in the adult? Well, I could reply to him. Well, it's your job to get this sorted out. I did ask you to do it, and I'm sorry you've missed the deadline. But right now, I'm doing something that's really urgent. So can you go away and think of something? Some, find some way, something that will get you where you need to be. Come back at four, and I'll, we'll have a chat about it. So here, I've got rid of him. He's gone. I've asked him to sort it out. Not expect me to sort it out. I look back at my report to signal that our interview is finished. I'm looking after myself because I've got this body of work to do. And I've asked him to use his noddle and find out what can be done instead of him asking me. Yeah, let him take the responsibility. He might come back at four o'clock and say, I couldn't find any ways round it. Okay, we'll deal with it then. I will have got my body of work done. I haven't got hot under the collar. My heart rate hasn't increased. And I've given him the dignity of trying to sort it out. So I've got rid of, but he's okay and I'm okay. Can you see the difference? It's much better for everybody. So we'll leave TA there this week. We've got one more part of the OK Corral and that is I'm not OK and you're not OK. Get nowhere with. So we'll see what that brings next week. So now I'm going to introduce the little film um, that I took at breakfast time the other day and a little bit of the birds. Oh, here's the gardener, Pete. <laughs> He's got a great big piece of grass on his fork. Oh, weed from our pond. Yeah. Oh, well, he's doing well. So I'm going to say cheerio, and I hope you enjoy the little film, and I'll see you next week. I hope you've enjoyed our little time together. It's a time away from everything, isn't it? Just where we can relax and, um, yeah. I hope you've enjoyed it. So take care this week and I'll see you next week all being well. Bye. That's what dreams are made of. Hold it in your hand. Standing on a shipwreck. Finding peace and land. Oh, that's what dreams where you dwell walking in the desert catch a glimpse of well and in the line of expectations of what the future holds to look for all that glitters in your search for gold The birds that sing The undefined The ground beneath in the night stumble in the darkness finally see the light oh that's what dreams are made of destined to be shared someone who will listen someone to dry your tears and in the line of expectation Just all
That's what dreams are.